Welcome back. Now, in some interesting developments, the Health Ministry has shot off a letter to the BCCI and the Sports Authority of India urging them to curb surrogate advertising of tobacco and alcohol products by sports persons. The centre has also requested the Indian Cricket Board to not allow surrogate ads during its events like the IPL, claiming it to be disheartening to see celebrities who are role models promoting such products. The Health Ministry has also suggested measures like getting athletes to sign anti-tobacco forms in order to refrain them from promoting such products. Just to put it into perspective, India ranks second in tobacco-related deaths worldwide. Every year, 13 lakh people lose their lives because of tobacco. Now, the question arises, is money that important for cricketers and athletes that they are fine promoting products that can have a negative impact on your health? But also as a counter view, should they necessarily be held responsible for the society's illnesses and be made scapegoats and held up to a necessarily higher pedestal here? It's a very important debate and I am being joined by my esteemed guests at this point, Bijan Mishra, consumer rights activist, Dr. Rajiv Jayadevan, former president of the IMA, Cochin, and Chandesh Narayanan, author and sports journalist. Chandresh, I'll start off with asking you this question at this point. Uh, some would argue that it is probably unfair to expect athletes and especially cricketers uh, to be put at a higher pedestal because they are all human beings and at the end of the day, they all are subject to the same vices and weaknesses which all of us are. But there is also a merit in the understanding that unfortunately in India, especially cricketers are seen as role models and youth icons and they need to set an example. Where do you weigh in on this debate? I think it's an interesting uh, debate that has cropped up thanks to the health ministry. And uh, about 24 years ago, there was a ruling which uh, prohibited uh, the tobacco products being uh, sponsors of cricket in India or sports in India. So you had uh, a major tobacco company first and then a second major tobacco company sponsoring yeah. cricket in India. That stopped. There was a tobacco company which was sponsoring cricket in Australia in New Zealand and worldwide. There were different tobacco companies. All those companies have stopped prohibiting. Yeah. Even the alcohol companies which used to uh, uh, sponsor cricket in India and the yeah, rest of the world, true. they've also been prohibited by various government orders. Uh, I think currently what's happening is that uh, it's more related to pan masala, if I'm not mistaken. And that too is being endorsed not by current cricketers, yes. but by former cricketers. Uh, I think that's the point where exactly. this whole order has come about and uh, it's a it's a very uh, important debate uh, whether it's current cricketers or former cricketers they're all role models you wouldn't find say and i'm taking the liberty of taking some names of some big current players from india say a uh, jaspreet bumra or a virat kohli or a rohit sharma uh, endorsing a tobacco and an alcohol product because they have a, uh, so they are also uh, bound by central contracts with the bcci uh, that's why I am uh, 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 I'm pretty certain that they will never endorse it. You have the former cricketers who are endorsing some pan masala products, uh, but those former cricketers are doing it of their own free will. Uh, it's up to an individual at the end of no, the day. No, but the problem uh, is they are not Chandesh. bound by any contract. Yeah. Chandish, the problem is a lot of these former cricketers, and I'm sure our viewers can understand who we are referring to. We don't want to take any names, but it's all there in the public domain. We have all seen these advertisements of these former great legends who are endorsing Pan Masal products. They are also on the BCI contract in terms of legends contracts, in terms of sports commentators. They're all there on the BCI panel. So in many ways, they also represent the sport as much or perhaps even greater than current players here. Is then is the accountability then with the BCC to also pull up these former players? They might not be playing for the Indian team, but they still represent the sport and the BCCI. Uh, I don't think they represent the BCCI per se in that sense because uh, what they do is, you're right that they have a con contract with the BCCI, but it's more related to commentary. It's not related to uh, uh, the BCCI okay. co controlling various aspects of their day-to-day uh, -day life. Uh, like it happens in the case of, say, uh, a Virat Kohli or a Rohit Sharma. So Virat Kohli or a Rohit Sharma cannot be seen uh, endorsing a uh, surrogate betting app, for example, or they cannot be seen, they cannot be doing adventure sport, but a former cricketer can. Uh, so I think that in that sense, uh, uh, it's fair that uh, the former cricketers, I think it's a moral responsibility of the former cricketers that they need to step forward and see whether it's really something that they want to be associated with. Uh, and uh, 
the ball is really in their court. The BCCI cannot control them to that extent because they are uh, contract with the former cricketers only and only related to uh, to commentary. And and not all of them who endorse the Pan Masala products okay. are uh, are are uh, contracted to the BCCI. Some are contracted to the networks. Now whether the networks uh, step in yes, and say, "Sorry, uh, you need to step away," so the former cricketer can very well say. I can take my own call. You can't tell me what I need to do or what I don't need to do. It's. I think at the end of the day, for the former cricketers, uh, a, a moral question that they need to answer, and they are best placed to answer better than us. But I agree the, the, that this order, this uh, re, uh, request from the health ministry is timely. But uh, the good thing is that none of the current cricketers are involved in this, and no alcohol or tobacco product is being promoted. Uh, directly or indirectly by okay. the BCCI themselves uh, as a sponsor of any series or match in India or even ICC. There is an there is another questionable vice which is promoted by the BCCI and the players and we'll come to that perhaps at the conclusion of this debate. But let me now bring in the commercial aspect of this. Bijan Mishra, you're a consumer rights activist. You have often taken a very progressive stand on these issues here. But my point is, is there an element of hypocrisy in double standards available here? And this argument applies whether it be to tobacco, uh, to cigarette advertising in the 90s, whether it be surrogate alcohol advising, ad uh, advertising in the 20, early 2000s and the past decade, or now to pan masala and gutka advertisements as well. If these companies are allowed, if these brands are allowed to sell their businesses and the government, there is a lot of revenue generated out of the sale of these products here. It's you so can it's you can allow those livelihoods to, livelihoods to exist. You can allow that revenue to exist, but at the same time, you have to come up with a moral standard. Okay, you are allowed to sell it, but you can't promote it, or other people cannot be asked to promote it. Isn't there a level of duplicity here? Yeah, absolutely. You see, Ritanshu, what we all have to understand is that when there is a law, you know, the law clearly defines what is surrogate advertisement. And we are talking here about surrogate advertisement, okay. which Health Ministry has raised the issue. It is not about what the celebrity is doing or not doing or what he can do or not do. It is as per the existing law, which comes under COTPA, you know, 2003, and also Consumer Protection Act of 2019. You see, it clearly defines that any kind of a surrogate advertisement, which is not allowed as per law, you know, has to be pulled down, pulled up, very heftily, so that they don't do that. You know, they do brand sharing in such a cleverly manner, trying to tell people that, you know, they, they are very innocent. It's not right. You see, and the health ministry uh, should not only... No, but Mr. Notice, Mishra, my point, Mr. Mishra, my argument, Mr. Mishra, as an, my, my, Mr. Mishra, my argument as a devil's advocate is this, okay? If you are allowing that product to exist and to be sold despite its health benefits, you have already taken a stand on that. Then by trying to come up with various ways to ensure that it's not marketed properly, is that fair or is that justified? Yeah, people will find creative ways to promote the brand. That's rule number one of trying to do a business here. Ritanshu, yeah. as you know, I've come in public domain taking a position that regulation hmm. should be neutral, uniform, and not arbitrary and discriminatory. So what the position I am taking is tobacco Fine. is legally allowed to be sold, but under certain terms and conditions. And what mm. we have gone, uh, what I have gone okay. against is in a dis in a discretionary manner, the government goes banning certain products and allows certain products to be listed as tobacco products and allows them to be sold. But here we are more talking about the marketing aspect in terms of ethical practices, how the ethical practices should be governed mm. under the law. And this is what I think the health ministry is talking about. And today, if you see, Hitangshu, that all the big brands, you know, who are into this tobacco and alcohol business, they're all into surrogate advertisement. And that surrogate advertisement is not allowed. Officially, legally, it is not allowed. So the health ministry should take cognizance and take immediate action okay. into that. My question... So my contention my, is, you are allowing... My question, again, Bijan Mishra... Mijan Mishra, I agree with your point. Surrogate advertisements, if they are banned, people who come up with that, I mean, surrogate advertisement has clear rules. People who try and flout their rules by coming up with very nice and 
fragrant and beautiful looking animation to what, a, what actually comes out of a pan masala sachet, they need to be taken to task. My question is, where do you draw the line at surrogate advertisements? I'll give a simple example here. A key franchise in the IPL is the very name of that IPL team is essentially surrogate marketing for the alcohol brand which promotes and owns that IPL team. Will you stop calling that team with that alcohol brand name? Yeah, you see, the, the again, the point which I'm saying is there has to be some kind of a scrutiny or a kind of an advisory capacity in terms of defining, as you very rightly said, okay. how do you define what is surrogate and what is not surrogate? And there are clear rules made for that. Yeah. And what we are trying to say is for commercial purpose, you cannot take the health and safety of the citizens for granted. So what we are trying to always trying to bring about is okay. tell the government that if you know what is surrogate and it is well defined within the law, then you should be able to take a position where you can allow to an extent which is allowed as per law and not take action against such activities which are not allowed. You know, like I, I okay. tell you, it's, it's, a, it's a big kind of a uh, issue which is coming up now because the government is being caught sleeping. The government is not coming out with a clear position. The government should come out very clearly with the position, like they've sent a notice now. What we are saying is, so just serving a notice doesn't help. What you need to do is to bring out good regulations, good practices in place, where such surrogate advertisements are not seen happening, which are not meant to be you know, okay. uh, telecasted or uh, publicized in the print media. So what we are all the time trying to tell the government is come out with a good, good clear-cut regulation, make the regulation transparent, accountable. Okay. It should not be... Let, let, me, let, me then aspect, let me then bring in the other dimension of this entire debate here. Dr. Raji Jaidavan, as a medical expert here, do you feel surrogate advertisements can even... I mean, do you feel that cracking down on surrogate advertisements can an effective measure at all because we all know the advisories for instance on alcohol on cigarette packets for instance the advisories and the graphic images cover almost 70 percent of the packet screen yeah and i'm sure everyone who smokes a cigarette is aware of the medical problems or the hazards of smoking a cigarette yet i don't think that has ever had a dissuading effect on people who smoke or people who consume tobacco here uh do you feel that there is an element of hypocrisy in trying to control surrogate advertising in the first place? Or do you feel that it is something which has a very important impact in promoting the sale of such products? As a doctor, uh, I see people who have cancer from tobacco. I see people with liver cirrhosis from alcohol and cancers of multiple organs from both these products. And it is not just cancers, we get heart disease, we get stroke, we get impotence, which is hardly even reported by young men. And then we have indirect effects of these products. Uh, it is not just the individual that suffers, not just the patient that suffers. The family is devastated. Uh, the money runs out. Uh, that trickles down onto poor education for children. It affects the health care of the older people in the family. And it's a, it's a cascading effect. Now, as a doctor, my advice is limited okay. to the patient and their family members. But a famous person's actions or mm. words has an influence on hundreds of thousands of people, directly or indirectly. We must we must look at the we must look at the two angles here. Now, I'll for our viewers, I'll update a couple of positions here. There's a common misconception that drinking alcohol is good for health, and that's promoted by many people who enjoy their drink. Now, I don't have a problem with people enjoying their drink, but mm. that's wrong advice. The position has been updated in 2023. The World Health Organization and a publication in the Lancet Public Health has shown that there's no safe limit okay. for alcohol, which basically means even the smallest amount, it is a okay. type 1 or grade 1 carcinogen, which is equal to radiation and things like that. Now, how many people know that? Has this message reached our people? Your question was whether these pictures on the packets will dissuade the people. I'll explain it like this. In India, our average age is 28.6. In Germany, it is 45. In plain English, it means half our population is below the age of 28.6.
Habits formed at a young age decide a person's health. I have heard people argue that, hey, you know, I smoke and, and drink, feel, but it's my neighbor. And do you agree with that view, Dr. Jaydevan, that since you say that habits formed at a young age have a, have a massive influence, and at a young age, there's also a time where people idolize superstars, whether it be film superstars or whether it be cricketing superstars, do you also feel that is also an important aspect that needs to be controlled? True. While I applaud uh, certain uh, celebrities for promoting good social causes and good health habits, if somebody is engaging in mm. directly or indirectly promoting harmful products, I cannot agree with that because that affects the health of the country as a whole. Imagine okay. if half our population is at that age. Imagine what their health will be when they grow older and imagine the healthcare costs to the country as Absolutely. a whole. There's a World Health Organization study that says India loses 1% of its GDP. I repeat, 1% of our GDP to diseases and illnesses and premature deaths that are caused by tobacco. Now, these are these are all official publications. Startling. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely true. startling yeah. figures, Dr. Jaydevan. I'm sorry yeah, to cut you short, but I get the, I, we, I, we have got the main point of what you're trying to say. Let me quickly get in one last question at this front from Chandresh. Chandresh, it's a two-part question, but I just have a one minute before I wrap up. One, number one, is it fair or is it incomplete to just look at cricketers? Because as we discussed here, their amount, the involvement of current cricketers in advertising these products is very limited compared to, say, the film industry, where I'm sure every top Bollywood star is, advocate, is, is a brand ambassador for good craft products at this point. Secondly, should there not be a crackdown then on betting apps here? Because that is also another activity which has a lot of grey area, but has sponsorship up to the highest levels of the cricketing scene in India. Thanks, you. You bring up a very valid point, and I think that uh, uh, what my esteemed co-panelists have said, I completely agree with them. I think uh, if you leave it to individuals, they will turn around and tell you that it's our source of income, especially former cricketers. You can't stop them because they're not contracted in any which way with anyone else. Uh, when it comes to, say, betting yeah. apps, uh, in India, BCCI doesn't allow the, uh, the sponsorship by betting apps to a large extent. Abroad, there are a lot of uh, uh, the betting apps are uh, uh, legal, so they uh, willy-nilly sponsor major cricket events. Uh, and okay. uh, again, it's that, that country's prerogative what they do with yes. those kind of uh, uh, with, with those kind of products. At the end of the day, okay. I think like you did with alcohol and uh, tobacco product sponsorship of sporting events in India, you brought in a law. People yeah. adhere to the law. Uh, we need to do the same thing. Uh, if you bring in a lot, if you yeah, leave it to individuals, I think Chandresh, uh, I'm sorry, once again to cut. I agree. Chandresh, thank you so much for jetting us. That's an important point. And as you mentioned here, there has been progress from cigarette advertisements to alcohol advertisements to good car advertisements as well. This is a step in the right direction, but it can't be the only step. Thank you so much, Bijan Mishra, Chandresh and Dr. Jaydevan for joining me on this very insightful debate. It's time for a short break. More news and updates are on the other side. Stay tuned. <laughs>